It's no secret I've been a big fan of Swarms since it was launched over a decade ago. And I mean, I've made multiple courses on it that still sell courses every week to this day. And we don't talk about it a lot. But we recently got some news out of Mirantis that might be bad news. So I talked about it last week on my live stream. And um, yeah, let's get into it. Swarm is something I've been a fan of, but Swarm didn't gain industry support. For the last three or four years, there have been rumors that Swarm was dead. What was really happening was Docker, the company, had sold its enterprise business in 2019 to Mirantis. And Mirantis took over that business and all of the Swarm customers. At the time, I'm, some, I'm thinking it was somewhere between 700 and 1,000 Swarm enterprise customers paying for enterprise support of Swarm, possibly even Kubernetes because their platform kind of did both. And that meant Mirantis, based on incentive of revenue, they were hiring Swarm engineers, applying small fixes and a few features a year. We would see a few additions. For example, in 2024, at the beginning, we saw the addition of advanced storage support or the idea, maybe even the beta of supporting the same kind of storage plugins that Kubernetes supports, CSI. And so CSI support was built in. It then required that the storage vendors go and update their code to support Swarm's CSI implementation. A few did, and the community, especially with the open source tools, added some stuff. I've seen still today even traction there of people reaching into PRs of different storage vendor tooling and saying, hey, are any plans for Swarm support? We'd like you to support Swarm, that kind of thing. But one of the things that's kept hope all these years is even though Docker wasn't hiring full-time people to work on Swarm, they were still shipping it. One of Docker's actual core internal mandates is that we don't take away features. And since Swarm has been in Docker Engine since at least 2017, maybe 2016, it they didn't really want to take it out, right? They didn't want to remove functionality and break Docker for people. So they've left it in. They've added security fixes. They've added any you know library updates. So they've kept it going without really adding new features, without adding new functionality, promising new deliverables. They've just at least maintained it. So definitely Docker has put in work here. I want to, don't want to say that Docker has ignored this or let it die. They have maintained it in its current state, just not really going out of their way to program new features. That was what Mirantis was doing. But we've now seen our first sign on the Portainer blog, thanks to Neil and the team, of maybe there's not a lot of future here. So Portainer, the essential tool for Docker Swarm users facing a Kubernetes future. And this is a little sad to me, maybe expected, but Neil did a great job, by the way, thanks to the Portainer team for just supporting Swarm and Kubernetes and so many other ways, including just Docker Engine for running containers in production for all these years. They've been a great supporter of the nonprofit communities as well as the for-profit communities. Their tools give you a lot for free. And this is a really interesting article of reading the tea leaves of the latest Mirantis Kubernetes engine. Now to back up a second, the Mirantis Kubernetes engine is how Mirantis sells Kubernetes and maintains support. And since they bought a lot of this infrastructure and tooling from Docker, what was called Docker Data Center, Docker Enterprise, had different names over the years, but this Docker orchestration platform, technically what it was doing was underneath, it was running Swarm on all the nodes. And if you wanted to optionally add Kubernetes, it would have Swarm install Kubernetes because you can run both. Why not? So they provided that tooling. It went to Mirantis. Mirantis kind of imported a lot of that and provided the same sort of functionality, largely because they had Swarm customers that were paying them lots of money, presumably. And so they wanted to give those people confidence. So over the years, 2020, 2021, again in 2022, we saw Mirantis putting out megaphone announcements of, we support Swarm. Here's our plans for Swarm. We're guaranteeing two years of support for Swarm. And that gave a lot of us hope. So much that we started a Swarm community, even after all my years of selling Swarm courses, talking about Swarm at conferences, doing workshops. I was doing a lot of Swarm maintaining and, and help. I did everything but maintain the code, basically. <laughs> and we started in our Discord server. We dedicated a Swarm room that just was only a two or three or four years old, maybe. And then we even started a Swarm awesome list. I think it's called Awesome Swarm. So you've probably seen the awesome list before, but Awesome Swarm was something what I wanted to do to help the community get through the confusion of when all these different 
toolings started to break down or different vendors out there stopped supporting their tool on Swarm, the struggle for people still wanting to use Swarm was, well, I want to use it, but I can't find the things that still work on it. Since Swarm wasn't changing, it wasn't Swarm's fault that these other things broke. It's that those open source projects either got deprecated or the, the company that was making that third party open source stopped funding that development. So we've been maintaining, thanks to AnsaQ and some of the other people in the community, for helping maintain a list of resources, tool add-on third party products. And there's a decent amount of stuff out there for what is relatively a very small community in comparison to Kubernetes now. And so you might have said, well, it's only a matter of time before Mirantis tries to take its customers and gently move them off Swarm into Kubernetes so that they have less to support, right? Two orchestrators is a lot more work. So this has started to happen. And Neil correctly, in my mind, correctly identified that in the readme for the latest major version of their platform, they say for existing MKE users, upgrading to MKE4, that's Mirantis Kubernetes Engine, requires just one command or a single click. Users of MKE 3.7, the prior release, can easily transition while keeping all workloads running. For Swarm users, Mirantis will continue to support in MK3. So that one sentence caused this entire blog post to be written, of which I think Neil is right. So let's keep going. While Mirantis has pledged to maintain Swarm support in their MKE3 series, the release of MKE4 with its complete focus on Kubernetes makes one thing clear. The clock is ticking for Swarm users. If you rely on Swarm as your container orchestration tool, now is the time to consider your next steps. For those who either by choice or are required to remain on Swarm for legacy reasons, Portainer is the ideal solution. It offers continuity, a seamless transition path, and an unparalleled user experience for both Swarm and Kubernetes environments. Now, granted, that is marketing, it is their website, but I believe Neil's absolutely true here. I know lots of Swarm users that use Mirantis, sorry, that use Portainer, and they often are environments where they have just individual Docker hosts that aren't in an orchestrator, which also can be run on Portainer. And then they have Portainer for the Swarm. Portainer can run IoT, Edge devices, Kubernetes, all this stuff, all in the same centralized console. We've had Neil on the show multiple times over the years, just because they have such a great uh, tool to solve so many problems. So he goes through why you need to plan for the future of Swarm. Mirantis's decision to limit Swarm support in MKE3 raises several concerns for Swarm users. No new features or innovations. This one I'll call out just because we've only been seeing one or two new features a year and they were usually pretty small features. So this isn't to me a huge change in the policy we've seen for the last five years. They really slowed down Swarm features in 20, early 2019. We really haven't seen a pickup in advancing the functionality. What we've seen is sort of solving some edge cases, providing a few additional label controls or other little enhancements that help an existing Swarm user's life be a little easier, but isn't something that's gonna make Swarm suddenly a competitor again in the orchestration market. So this effectively puts Swarm in maintenance mode. And again, since it's included in Docker Desktop and Docker Engine, it's not necessarily going to be forgotten and we're not gonna see security updates lacking because Docker sends Docker Engine to enterprises, to companies all over the world. And so they're not gonna ship vulnerable code. So if people find CVEs in Swarm code, I still believe Docker will fix it. I think the real risk here long-term is that now that Mirantis is sort of rang the bell, how long will it be before Docker decides that it's more work for them to maintain the Swarm code in terms of keeping CVEs current, keeping Go libraries updated and other external third-party libraries updated just for supporting Swarm, or are they gonna take a first time ever approach and actually pull something out of the Docker engine entirely, which is to pull out all the Swarm kit all the overlay networking and all that functionality that makes it exist. Will that day come? I feel like the answer is yes, but it could be so far ahead that it's nothing we need to worry about now. I mean, I just don't think that we need 
to worry about what's going to happen in five years. None of us know what's going to happen in five years. AI could be running all of this in five years and it won't matter anymore anyway. So the next, the second thing he points out is increasing security risk. Over time, relying on older versions of MKE with limited updates could expose your environment to unpatched vulnerabilities and compatibility issues with modern container runtimes. That's absolutely true. So this is actually talking about MKE because it has Swarm built into it versus Docker Engine, which I'm talking about. If you're running MKE, you'll have to stay on the 3.7 platform. Presumably at some point, Mirantis will stop supporting that version. If they're anything like their past, they tend to support things at least two years past announcements. So when they decide the MKE 3.7 is now reached end of life, we will probably know that at least a year, if not two years ahead of time. And I don't know if they've announced that yet, actually, because I'm not an MKE user. But that decision doesn't relate to Docker Engine. If you want to understand the relationship of all this stuff, you have at the very bottom of all this, let's build up the stack. Down at the bottom, we have SwarmKit, a library, and we have Moby, which is the Docker Engine code. And there's other components that get pulled into those two, but those are two repos of open source Go code that are mashed together with a whole bunch of other Docker tooling, and that becomes the Docker engine, Docker D, as we all know it, that runs in every Docker machine. You're fine. Like, I don't see any time in the near future, I don't see any reason why we can't be using Swarm throughout 2025. Docker's gonna maintain the security updates as long as they ship it. And I'm not too worried about that. I'm still gonna be selling Swarm courses. I'm still gonna be answering Swarm questions. I think we're fine for at least another year. That, I think, will really come down to when Docker makes a decision to finally pull out Swarm from Docker. Even then, who knows what the future brings? I mean, this is all a fashion, right? A lot of tech is opinion and fashion. The fashion right now is Kubernetes. It will still be that way for the foreseeable future as the major orchestrator. We still at times wonder, will there be a day where Swarm actually gets more community support, more usage. And in the past, we've seen Docker make little efforts like donating or giving the SwarmKit repo to the Moby Foundation, um, which was an idea that they created six years ago around separating themselves from a foundation similar to the CNCF that would maintain and help ov oversee Swarm. Today, you can download the SwarmKit repo and it's completely open source, you could technically build it and have your own little command line that's not Docker run that Swarm engine, and it would run separately from Docker. It would just use Docker as the runtime, and it itself would become the orchestrator. I don't know really anybody that does that, but it's technically possible if you understand the code a little bit. Uh, so we just don't really know. We could see situations where certain companies that love Swarm so much maybe start taking over some of the open source development of it. That hasn't really happened yet. <laughs> so it's kind of like we're in a holding pattern. But I do think that this is another negative effect on the overall Swarm community because those paying customers are a heavy influence on what features were coming to Swarm that Mirantis was promised to build. And they may not be building those anymore. Like it doesn't sound like they would be. And they were promising for years, continued support, a continued maturing of the CSI standard in Swarm, which we haven't seen a ton of out of them. I haven't seen any, any announcements since they launched a year ago. So they might be putting down all of their pencils, so to speak, on developing new features and functionality and maybe just focused on maintenance in terms of just making sure it keeps working and doesn't have security vulnerabilities. So the last bit that he points out here is integration challenges. The industry is rapidly converging on Kubernetes as the standard for container orchestration. New tools, technologies, and platforms are increasingly designed with Kubernetes in mind, leaving Swarm users at risk of being left behind. I feel this myself. In fact, earlier, mid-2024, Traffic launched Traffic Proxy 3.0. And I was a little bit worried that when they launched it, they were going to announce that Swarm was no longer built in as a supported orchestrator or technically a, a supported API. They didn't do that. They actually supported Swarm and they continue to support Swarm. So yay for them sticking around. We've obviously still got Swarm itself. And then there's lots of ways to make other tooling work, but we definitely are seeing less and less companies have top tier support for Swarm. And that only makes it harder and less 
of a use case for those of us that want to use it. The, the challenge really becomes here is the minute you deploy Swarm and you get your containers working and you think, great, this is all I really need. I can run our, our web apps that we have in our company. We, not, we don't have a ton of containers. We don't need a thousand nodes, even though Swarm might be able to handle that. There have been some rumblings lately around networking issues and various use cases that I think I've even seen some predictable approaches where they can predictably break the networking, which is overlay networking. And over the years, we've lost support of other third-party networking add-ons. So I do feel this stress of it works for now, but it may not continue working. And as I mature and as our company infrastructure matures, there's going to need to be an exit plan for everybody, I think, at this point. I don't see a forever future. Well, we could really argue that that's true for every technology. But <clears throat> going out as far as I can see, three to five years, I really don't think that there is a future where Swarm is going to get a bunch of features. I'm kind of going to be calling it on this one as this is a downer. This is just one more pin in the hat of Kubernetes won the orchestrator war if we were going to pretend that there was a war ever to begin with. And, but you still have Portainer, right? Like Portainer is still doubling down here. They're still saying they will swar support su Swarm. I believe that Portainer will probably support Swarm as long as Docker supports Swarm. So if we can keep these two companies, what I would say to you is if you're watching this video, if you're listening to this podcast, let your voice be heard. Go over to Docker support and just tell them you just send them a support contact information saying, hey, I love it. Go to Docker's Twitter account or X account or wherever they have their socials and do the same thing for Pertainer. Let them know that even if you're not paying for their products, that you still love the fact they support this. Because a lot of times they don't know, unless they've got telemetry turned on or if you're a paying customer, they don't know what features you're using. And we've never really been able to figure out the true scope of swarm usage, except for the few industry surveys that still even include it as an option. And obviously it's been declining and declining for years in those, but I think they've all pretty much removed it as a question. So thank you, Neil, for this. I did. I would have never seen these tea leaves on my own. I'm really glad you brought it up because that one sentence created this whole discussion. Let's just read it again. For swarm users, Marantis will continue to support in MKE3. When I read that again, I might think, well, they might even have an MKE3.8 release or something. Like they may still do a little more in the three, especially if they're paying customers push back a lot and say, no, 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 we love Swarm. We really, really want to pay you to maintain it. Because <laughs> in some cases, it might be pay cheaper just to pay them to maintain it for a, ver a larger company than it is for that company to completely migrate all those workloads over to Kubernetes. Um, they might do the cost-benefit analysis and realize that it's just cheaper to pay Marantis. So who knows? 